Hello friends and welcome. I am Paula and you are in my Las Vegas kitchen or affectionately called Studio K. You know what? Just this weekend, autumn arrived in Las Vegas and it got me thinking about savory things in the oven, doesn't it always? So I took a look on the Food Network website for one of our famous chefs from down on the strip, Giada De Laurentiis, in search of a casserole. Sure enough, I found several that sounded mouthwatering and I picked one and we are gonna make that together today. It is baked rigatoni with sausage and it's got some veggies and it's got three kinds of cheese and it just sounds wonderful for a weeknight supper on a cool night. Let's talk about the ingredients for it. First of all, we are going to use rigatoni pasta, although you can use any, any kind as well. Uh, we've got some mild Italian sausage out of the casing. Our greens are gonna be a head of broccoli. And then the three cheeses, mozzarella, ricotta, and parmigiano reggiano. Ooh, that sounds great already. We're gonna flavor that with some garlic, some basil, salt. We're gonna cook in olive oil. And then the last thing, this was a find. We have Carbone. It's a very famous restaurant here at Aria in Las Vegas. And Carbone makes a marinara sauce. The recipe calls for a jar of marinara. How perfect is this? Jada and Carbone together. Let's get cooking. Well, hey, let's talk prep. I've done a couple things before I invited you back in. First of all, I needed to chop my head of broccoli into very small florets because they're actually going into my casserole. Then I also have a clove of garlic that I chopped. And honestly, the thing that took the most time, the Parmesan cheese needs to be freshly grated and I'm gonna need two half cups. <laughs> so a full cup of that, my goodness, that took me a while. Um, the recipe calls for the Italian sausage um, out of the casing if you can't find it that way, that's okay. Just buy it in the casing, take the casing out and mush it with your fingers, it all works. Um, all right, so there's only really one step that we need to do before we get busy. And let me talk about two other things real quick. I do have my oven preheating at 400 and I have a big pot of boiling salted water ready for my rigatoni. I'm gonna drop that in and cook that for five minutes before we make our uh, casserole. So the step that we need to do here, let me get all my stuff out of the way. I have one cup of this ricotta cheese whole milk, ricotta cheese or ricotta if you're Italian. And I have a half cup of fresh basil that I just chopped. So those are going together and we're actually gonna drop those in the casserole as well. How savory does this sound? And then the third ingredient for that is just a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. So let me just grab my half teaspoon measure and drop that in. So we are to stir that together with a spatula. Let's do this. The cheese is very, very soft. It's not that I needed to keep it out of the oven or anything. Oh my gosh, what smells better than fresh basil, honestly. So as you well know, Jada is a large presence on the strip, even though she's a petite little lady. Um, her Jada at the corner of the Cromwell on the Flamingo and Las Vegas Boulevard corner is an enviable spot, although I'm afraid if you saw our video on Sunday, Old Red is gonna obstruct that view a little bit, I think. She also has Pronto over at Caesars, which I have sampled and I love Pronto. All right, that's all we have to do with this. Super simple, it's going in the fridge and I'm pulling out a big old frying pan. And you know what? I might as well drop in my rigatoni while we're here and set the timer for five minutes. See you in a minute. All right, I got out my biggest saucepan and I've got the fire on. I'm gonna drop in one tablespoon of olive oil. And we are going to get going with our sausage. Now, in the meantime, five minutes was up and I went ahead and drained the pasta. It is nowhere near done. Rigatoni is not done in five minutes, but it's gonna continue to finish cooking in the casserole in the oven. Now. I had to save about a half a cup of the broth or the water that it was cooked in because that is actually going to thin our sauce before we uh, make our casserole. All right, 
nothing works better than your fingers <laughs> when you're breaking apart ground meat, right? <laughs> and failing that, we get on my spurtle and do some stirring here. So this has to partially brown for approximately seven minutes and then I'm going to drop in the garlic for flavoring and the broccoli and we're going to cook it a little bit longer. So this will cook up very very quickly. It's only a pound and it's in this great big skillet. So let me come back to you after I wash my hands and this browns a little bit. That browned up quickly and oh my gosh, how much do I love the smell of pork sausage frying. Whew. Anyway, so here comes my uh, one clove of garlic minced, that's going in. And the only other ingredient right now is the broccoli. And I did make them nice and small. Let's give that a big toss and another three minutes to marry the flavors between these three items and then we will begin to add sauce and all the other goodies. By the way, I'll talk to you, I always, when I look up a recipe and decide to cook it, I always look at the comments as well just to see, you know, how many star ratings it has and what people say. Some folks substituted spinach for the broccoli, which is an idea I love because I think spinach goes great with Italian food and tomato sauce. Uh, and the other folks, some, some folks said they used half mild and half hot sausage, which is another alternative I like to give it a little bit more pizzazz. Hot sausage sometimes a little too hot for me, so I went with the mild. All right, three minutes. See you then. Alrighty, here we go. Time for some marinara sauce. Never had carbone marinara. Look how thick that is. That looks great. Whole jar goes in. And recipe calls for an additional just quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. So I'll sprinkle that in. And big, big mix. <laughs> Wow, talk about savory. Again, reading the reviews, this is really a family favorite. Everybody likes this and it's really good leftover. All right, the sauce is already starting to sizzle. Let's do this. In goes the pasta. Wow, I hope my uh, Frying pan's big enough <laughs> to fit all this, huh? Maybe I'll leave a little bit out just in case. I'll incorporate it back. This is a pound of pasta, so you know how many people this is gonna feed a lot. All right, and then the very last thing, to thin the sauce a little bit, this half a cup of the water or the broth from the uh, pasta noodles goes in to thin it. And we are almost ready to make a casserole out of this baby. And we're wrapping things up with all those different cheeses we talked about. So I pulled out my ricotta and basil mixture. And what you have to do here is put some little dollops on the pasta. And then we're going to nestle them down underneath so that they melt with a little bit of what I'm thinking is sort of a lasagna effect. Now one thing I did forget to say, in the pan, before I put this in the casserole, there was one other addition and that was a half cup of the grated Parmesan. This is the other half cup, we're gonna use that in a minute. But the first half cup got added in with the sauce and the pasta and everything. So let me see if I can find some holes to kind of drop this in and cover it up again. There's no right or wrong to this, but drop those in like so and cover them with pasta. All right, that's about the best I can do to bury my cheese. All right, next I have one and a half cups of shredded mozzarella pizza cheese. What casserole doesn't benefit from a topping of melted mozzarella? And this, because almost everything in here is fully cooked, it doesn't take long in the oven, really only about 20 minutes. So it is really gonna be kind of a quick, 
weeknight casserole. There's that. And then here is my other half cup of the Parmesan that I grated earlier. We'll drop that on, get a nice brown topping on this. And this is going in the oven. What do you think? That was pretty simple. I'll see you at the table. Hello there, 20 minutes in the oven, five minutes of rest later. Look what we have. It's a casserole that smells like a pizza. Oh, it's so fragrant here in the kitchen. I poured myself a little bit of a red blend because what goes better with pasta than red wine? And I'm ready to dig my spoon in. Let's see what we can get out of this. Oh. <laughs> It's big and hot. Let me just put my plate over there. It's gonna make a big mess. <laughs> all right, this, oh, it did make a big mess. It's all right. Let's try this. What do you say? First of all, I'm gonna take a little hunk of that ricotta and some sausage, a little piece of broccoli before I even have a noodle. I worried a little bit about the broccoli not cooking enough because it was raw, but it is tender crisp and absolutely perfect. It goes so well with that ricotta and basil. I can't even tell you. Let me have a noodle. Two. <laughs> mm. Those are also al dente, perfectly cooked. Oh my gosh, this is so, so good. I'm gonna have one more with a little bit of that caramelized pizza cheese on it. Check that out, everybody. I'm putting that whole thing in my mouth. Mm, mm, mm. Whoa, how is that good? Jada, huge two thumbs up on this. That is so good, so savory, and so easy to make. I love it. I'm gonna have leftovers all week and I know cameraman Dale can't wait to dig in. I'll tell you what, this is kind of a big deal for us right now because this is the very first Paula's Las Vegas Kitchen since we branched off into our own channel that is now monetized. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing and tell your friends, keep coming at us because we are gonna continue to bring you fun and delicious recipes all through the holidays. At least that's our plan. You guys, this is really, really good. Jada's baked rigatoni with sausage. Big thumbs up, give it a try. Thanks for watching. Everybody have a great week, we'll see you soon.